trying out a 3-liter Vivor ultrasonic cleaner. William Hovey Smith, 2024. This is Hovey Smith, the Backyard Sportsman. And today we're going to try out different materials on a Vivor ultrasonic unit that I've just purchased. Now I've not used this unit before or even seen one used. So we're starting out from absolute scratch. And the first thing I'm going to have to do is mix up some ultrasonic solution for it. Uh, this particular unit is advertised and designed for things like cleaning jewelry and eyeglasses. And I am going to use it for that and also hopefully for cleaning carburetors. I have a couple of lawnmower carburetors I need to work on. Now, I'm going to test it today with some old brass cases, 577 Snyder, and also uh, plastic parts, and rubber parts, and brass parts, and steel, and see how it reacts with this variety of substances. The solution we're going to use is made up with magic green. Now that material is in a solid powdered form. Uh, it is caustic, it is toxic, and the fluids you make with it are caustic and toxic. And you use it in a measure of three ounces per gallon of water. Well, that happens to be 1,312.5 grains. I'm a reloader, so my scales are in grains rather than ounces. So uh, we're going to make up the solution. Now there are many warnings on that jar. Uh, among them, don't breathe the dust. Certainly don't eat it or drink it or get it on the skin. Use protective gloves when you use it. Uh, wash it immediately. Uh, wash your hands immediately if you get some on you. And otherwise, uh, yeah, certainly keep all of this junk out of the way of children because it is deadly. Now, beside it is a spray can for cleaning electronic movements on watches, which is what we're really after here, in part. What prompted me to buy this cleaner is that I have a watch. This one that I purchased and wore decades ago. And the case is corroded and the dial is discolored and I'd like to restore it. And that's part of what I got the ultrasonic for. By comparison, this is the same watch in new condition. Since I'm a reloader and shooter, I have brass cases to clean. Now the typical thing to do with brass cases is to tumble them in walnut dust. Hmm. Will this unit clean them? I don't know. We'll see. Also, we have this neat little box with the rabbits on it. Two compositions. This was probably pewter. And then we have a steel, steel box. And will this clean up? Okay. And finally, we have a carburetor. I have two lawnmowers that needed carburetor cleaning, and that's another reason I purchased this unit. Will this solution work on this unit with all its caked on congealed gasoline and oil and stuck on gaskets and so on and so on? I don't know. We've measured out and mixed up our fluids. And again, uh, God, got to get kid, keep kids away from this stuff. This magic green looks very much like Tang. This sitting in a kitchen, some three-year-old would think this is some sort of sugary lemon-lime drink. Yeah, I've, woof. We've got to be very careful with this stuff around kids. 
So we're going to add this to our ultrasonic cleaner and get started cleaning up some stuff. Being a typical guy and jumping right into the work, we've already made a mistake. And that mistake was, I've got too much material in here. They advise not to allow materials to overlap, but to allow plenty of space between them. So, well, my case is going to have to come out of here. Okay, that's better. I've left 10 cases in in the top of our little box. Now to continue reading the directions like I should have done. It says do not drop items into the tank. Keep the lid on during use. Never immerse the machine or power core in water. Do not touch the power plug with wet hands. Unplug the power source while filling or emptying the tank. Don't block the vents. Take care when adding or removing items because the fluid will be hot. And this machine cannot be operated continuously. Uh, 30 minutes at a time is the most. And you must have the fluid level up about there. Best use. Do not use the same socket as TV, radio, or computer. Items that can be cleaned. Glasses, office supplies, daily supplies, jewelry, and tableware. Items not suitable. Wooden articles. Gems with softer surfaces. Coating and finishing inferior products. Bonded gemstones, items with scratches and cracks. Support this channel by buying my outdoor books, business books, novels, and recommending them to your local libraries. Now, I've done some 20 books on a variety of subjects. Now, I have specialized in hunting with muzzleloading guns and actually rebuilding muzzleloading guns. And some of those, such as I describe in my e-book, uh, were really in terrible shape. And I wish I'd had that unit then. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they really were gummed up. So if you shoot black powder and have other uses for such an instrument, yeah, this might be useful to you. I have the unit on. And I find these operating buttons singularly hard to read. This is your time setting. This increases the amount of time. I set it originally at 15 minutes. This, this, this decreases it. And this is on and off. This is your temperature setting. This one up, this one down, and this one on and off. So I have the temperature unit going and the time going. The unit has completed its cleaning, so we shall see. Somewhat, I guess. It's certainly not polished. The rabbits stand out better. I'm not going to try carburetor parts. 
And of course, this whole machine will have to be cleaned uh, after we get through with this. Well, we're counting down to the last few seconds now on the carburetor, and we'll see how it does. Yeah, we got a lot of junk out of there. I'm going to give it another another go though. A little different orientation perhaps. We're done with our carburetor and the water which was once lime green sort of is now blackened. We have pieces of loose debris floating around in the tub now. Remains of old gasket material mostly, I suppose. Dirt, and grease, and who knows what else. Inside of the bulb still has some incrustations there but much better than it was. Okay. Well, how did we do? A little rabbit turned out fairly well. And uh, the pewter cleaned up nicely in contrast against the steel back. On the brass cartridge cases, there's really no discernible difference. Uh, between the ones that I ran through the machine and the ones I just put in the solution and took out and rinsed. Uh, yeah, the traditional walnut hull tumbling is obviously the better way to go there. About the carburetor. It did some good. Uh, yes, this is in better shape than it was. And likewise, the carburetor itself, uh, the plastic parts uh, didn't react at all. Uh, they are clean. And the points are clean. Now the little tiny ejector injectors here and the little tiny valves, I have no idea if they are any better off or not. But the exterior of the carburetor is better. But the gaskets, parts that were sticking on, yeah, they still pretty much are. So this would still have to be mechanically removed. So just dunking it in the solution and treating it uh, is not going to solve all your carburetor problems. This unit is too small for anything but really the smallest of carburetors. So if you have this big whomping carburetor, no, it won't fit in here. But we did learn some stuff, and we have a machine now to completely clean, uh, which I'll do with water and alcohol to get all this grease stuff out of it. But now, this is Hovey Smith, reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time.